welcome back to Reverse Sub Channel, uh, and we're going to be looking at the T25 project we had in. Uh, you would have seen a quick, uh, I think it was about a minute and a half video we did when the uh, the van actually landed. I think it was actually two months ago now. Like everything else, time seems to be flying too quick. So we're looking at getting on with the projects now in the next few weeks, uh, starting with the T25 or Vanagon as the Americans will call them, for those of you who are watching. And just see over my shoulder, the van sat in the unit, the back unit, which is workshops, the garrison workshops. So what I thought I'd do is, having put the quick video out there, which I'll put a link to at the end of this one, uh, we just thought we'd give a quick walk around on the state it's in after delivery. I meant to do it sooner, but we never got around to it as typical. Uh, so I thought I'd do a quick walk around the bus now, and then obviously we're about to start working on it. So we'll show all the progress through that. We've got a pretty different approach to the outside on the paint side uh, and art. Uh, we are getting it signed written for our festival, which is Dorset Box Fest. But we've got a kind of uh, something different we're going to do with it. So obviously we'll make sure that we uh, follow the build on here and show everybody as well as our social medias elsewhere. So the hub's currently closed, so I'm sat in a big empty yard. So I thought, right, while well, I've got two minutes, it's just started raining, but while I've got two minutes, I want to do the quick walk around. So I shall show you around the new project. So those that haven't seen the first video, there she is. She's originally, uh, well, when I brought it, we was looking at, um, it was a 1983. Carl, the guy who brought it off, sent the paperwork off to Germany and actually come back as a uh, 82, which is tax and MOT exempt this year, uh, as of the 1st of April, just gone. But um, the drastic changes to this will MOT anyway, hopefully next week. So as you can see, just from this angle, it's sitting pretty low and unlike my Trekker, this is actually static. So just that tiny lip there getting into the unit, I have to get a scaffold board down just to get it in. Um, it covers, goes under the front bumper and back, but it just bellies out in the middle. So you have to excuse the mess in the garrison at the moment. We've got so many projects and stuff crammed in. But just to give you a better idea and go even lower, that is static which is pretty cool. It's going to be a nightmare, but we'll show it. We'll, we'll show it. We, we shall, I'll oh, start again, but we shall see. There we go. Um, so yeah, it was originally built by Slam Ambassador Dennis. Um, let me change the angle on this screen one second. There we go, it's a bit better. It was originally built by Dennis at Slam Ambassador. I think it was about five or six years ago. Um, but uh, yeah, he did a hell of a lot of work to it. If no one knows him anyway, he, he basically slams and body drops uh, Volkswagens mostly. So obviously the tubbing work that's gone on this is, is quite phenomenal. This was about five, six years ago, so it's changed hands twice that I know. I bought it off Carl and I came across another guy called Steve who had it. He painted it blue. Um, and then Carl's taken all the blue off to get it back to its red. Um, the paint's in quite a mess from doing it. It's been DA'd quite a bit. I mean, originally it was DA'd there where the Slambassador logo was, but just looking at it, how deep, deep these scratches are. It's, it's, yeah, unfortunately it's probably too far gone. I've stopped trying to, I, we have done a bit of work on this door, which you can sl slightly see the difference, how shiny it is here, um, where we DA'd it a bit back with wet, wet paper. Um, and then my son, sort of buffed it up a little bit and it's come out, it's came out, it's come out quite nice. So now, uh, before we can go forward on the paint job, I say paint job, the artwork we're having done, um, we need to DA the whole thing um, just to get all the old paint off. I know we can see it here. So there's like, see the gray shadowing um, probably on the doors. Uh, you can't really see on this one. Um, the roof again. It's just got where they've taken the blue off with, thinners and whatnot. It's uh, it's just got paint and grey and well, it's a grey blue, sort of like this again. It just needs all going over to get it back to colour. But yeah, let's get another angle from here. But as it stands, it's had a hell of a lot of work done. It just needs some love now, I think, and us to put our own touch on it. But and do I do really like the idea of a big, dirty back tyre uh, and skinny on the front? I think. I'm going to have to do some of the wheels, I'm not sure what yet, but it needs a big deep dish on the back, I think. Um, obviously, you can actually touch the centre of the roof on this, it's that low. 
But yeah, here's the back. Obviously, slam bass are still logo on the back. The exhaust, which I'll show you why in a minute. But the exhaust, it's got a kind of budged stinger coming through the back. Um, and I'll show you why in a minute. But those that know these buses as such, obviously, you can get these in air cooled or water cooled. Uh, and this one being the front on this, it's got obviously a water cooled front, a water cooled bus. Hence the bottom grill at the bottom, which is usually for water cooled buses, and it's got square headlights. Usually the uh, air cooled don't have that bottom grill, and they usually um, round headlights. But you can, again, you can see a bit more of the mess on this. I mean, it's probably not as detailed, but obviously all the grey coming down here and in here. And you can see some of the tubbing work that's been done. Seats are going to need adjusting a little bit. Moving six foot one, there's not a lot of room in here, so it needs some sort of custom seat done. But yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. And then again, same this side, the logo was on it, it's just been rubbed back to get rid of it. But the DA marks are so excuse the sand on the floor, it's leaking oil as well. So I've just thrown a load of sand on the floor. What I should do is open up this side door. So with the door open, you can see again, I mean. That's how there isn't exactly much of a step getting into this bus, but I know how dark it is here, yeah, you can still see. So obviously gears, the gear linkage in the front actually runs straight through this, where most of the time it would be underneath. So again, it's you're limited a little bit here. I might actually put a full floor in here. Um, and then you can see the extent of the tubbing at the back, which is why the back just need, does deserve some really big Big wheel and tyre combo, I think, on the back. There's, well, following the other builds, there's the other two of the Beetle and the, the Active Julie, which we're actually starting next week, hopefully, or the end of this week, with the engine. But yeah, so obviously, with me saying about this being a water cooled bus, the difference is with it. Again, dashboard's a bit ropey, door card's missing, half the things don't work on a dashboard, but going back to the water cool part so spin it around so obviously with with the difference between this being a water cool bus is that the, the difference and changes have done and because of the lower inside of it they've basically put the running gear of a beetle on it not a beetle pan but just the running gear so front beam uh, gearbox and engine of a beetle and that way everything's been raised so as long as the front bumper clears that, that doesn't catch on anything underneath. So obviously by doing that, hence the big air scoop on the side. There, in the back of this, we have an air cooled 1600 Beetle engine and I should just open it up. And there you go. So hidden away in there is a 1600 single carb. We had a few issues when we got it. The bottom pulley was really loose and nut wasn't quite right. Top pulley was loose. Um, Paul from South Coast Customs, he's been down to help me with a few other things and I work sometimes in the week up there and um, he brought me a new pulley down. We couldn't get it started after it had been running. Um, so he come down, brought another pulley down and a new new bolt at the bottom which was absolutely screwed when we took it out. Um, got it all, all back together. We still couldn't get it started and we actually realised that we'd run out of fuel. So the good thing is I suppose by running out of fuel we wouldn't have noticed that half the engine bits were missing or were loose. So this has got a custom tank which sits underneath underneath this when it's down. There's another panel there, as in this one here, which has got a battery and that one's empty on that side. But the pure tank's under there, there's no gauge for it. So yeah, obviously we'd run out of fuel, which I'm gonna have to look at changing. Because I can't be carrying jerry cans around all the time. But yeah, uh, all running now. We have got a big oil leak. Oil's fine in the actual, on the dipstick, so it's either the gearbox or something's going on. But we'll look into that in, uh, in quite soon because I've got to try and get it onto a ramp uh, an MOT next week hopefully um, and then try and get it on a ramp so we can actually see what's gone underneath because obviously it's been so low and static we can't actually see what's been done really um, although I know it's been done well I'd like to have a look and just get a few questions on what's going on with it all and give me a better idea so yeah we're just about to start DAing it um, with wet pads and get this paint back to a nicer red before the next paint job and artwork we're about to do. Um, obviously needs a new mirror. 
think there's a door card for it but I've seen those that know these buses fuel gauge speedo none of them really work very well um, it's got a hydraulic handbrake as you can see there which is well about as much use as a chocolate fire guard and you put the lock on and the bus rolls forward um, as you can see gears are all over the shop um, it's not too bad but where the I think we're gonna have to put some sort of roll, um, rose joint down there and hold that linkage in place stop the rolling and it should tighten it up then probably put a GPS um, a GPS uh, speedo on there which one of the other lads that I know Caleb is he's well into these so he's, he's had a look around it for me and give me a few ideas the turning circle on the front is not great there's not a lot of room under there and um, again we want to try and get up and have a good look underneath see what's actually going on um because obviously there's not a great turning circle and we're only running on 15s i think but i'm not sure what to do with wheels yet that's going to be a big a big question mark obviously still got a fuel tank fuel cap here even though there's no fuel fuel lines to that but yeah there she is pretty cool i'm really looking forward to it to be honest uh, most people's faces when I tell them it's static um, is quite funny so that it might be the reason I try and leave it static um, it would be really nice to yeah, I kind of I like putting things on obviously the truck is on a hydro sits on the floor this would look sweet if it was sat on the floor but it's kind of so unique because it's static and runs at that height um, I'd see how far I get away with it really traveling wise there's a couple of roads around local to us I can't use of the speed bumps but majority of it won't be a problem i don't think so i think we'll uh leave it as it is for now we've got the artwork going on it and wheels for now sort the engine out so it's reliable and running well put some custom billet seats in i think smaller pads maybe so i've got a little bit better height and uh run it for this summer i think a bit of advertising for the festival and the hub and see what see what comes up I suppose when it's on the road then and come across any other issues we can try just literally get it on the road and get some miles on it and find out what's going on. Run it down, run it down, run it down, ooh. Big feet, red nose, you a clown, ooh. Hair wet, loose skin, you a drown too. Old ass bitch and six feet down, ooh. Feel like every second go by like a fast man, but the fast man ain't quicker than me. Dashing down fast, dashing down past, and they can't shed a wind silver. Look at my... So that's it, the whole van has been mopped with, uh, I think we was using 80 wet grit. Uh, on the DI, a um, bit of a, a ball ache, so to speak. Um, some of the, I mean, this door obviously is a bit shiny because that's the one we did before, but some of the bad swirl marks from the DI from when they took all the blue paint off are still there, but unless you start removing red paint, that's never going to work. Um, as you can see where I haven't washed, I washed this side down yesterday, but uh, the other side's been done now. Um, some, I'll say patina, but it's weathered and probably due, due to the fact they sanded it like mad to get all the blue paint off but yeah it's another job done it's absolutely minging at the moment and needs needs a wash get all the uh the residue off from the in it i suppose this side's a lot worse because obviously you can see the state of the red towel or the, the actual yellow towel but yeah it just needs a good wash down from all this now and then probably give it a give it a buff uh, and polish to give it like the other door was see how it comes up and then have a chat with the guy who's going to come in and do the rest of the work for us uh, and see what angle we're going to go it's going to be completely different i don't think there's anyone done it in the uk yet um as a bit of a clue there is a guy in germany that's doing this sort of uh paint scheme if you may call it that so yeah keep following and i guess you'll find out but that for now i think we'll probably call it on that now i think yeah so as projects go um i wasn't actually intending to buy another project i nearly brought another trekker race car which i've been after for quite a few years but the uh the owner after doing the deal decided to pull the plug on the day i was going to collect it well literally getting in the vehicle to go and collect it which is a bit of a pain in the ass after three years of trying to do a deal on it and wanting knowing about the car for about five years but oh well Shit happens, I suppose. And then this come up. We used to have a Docker um, double cab T25 pickup. Uh, probably, I think it's when I started blasting. So about six years ago, it didn't wasn't suitable for my my business at the time. So I sold it, and I kind of after about two months. And after that, I've kind of regretted it ever since. So seeing this come back on the well, seeing this come on the market, 
and for what I thought was a brilliant price, really, um, it was a no-brainer. Um, kind of had to do it. But I think for the festival side of stuff, it'll make a great rolling advert, really. Yeah, so obviously the Beetle behind is up for sale. We do have a couple of people interested. Hopefully that'll be next month um, in a few weeks. And the Julie truck, we've just ordered engine parts to get the big block running. And over my shoulder somewhere next to that, in there, there's a Cummins engine as well, but I don't think we're going to do that till winter. So we might just have some fun with the big block first and see what it's like. But yeah, thanks for watching. Quick update. We are about to start doing paint work over the next, well, next couple of days, getting this back done and then get it ready for the um, for Steve, um, traditional sign writer guy, friend we know, who's going to come in and do his part on it, which I'm thinking, it, it might be a bit marmite. Most people I spoke to about the idea seem to like it. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens either way be a good advertising tool and get the festival brand out there as well as the hub. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, like and subscribe, please, and follow the projects. There is a few other projects on there, uh, like the Mad Dog Scooter we're building, uh, and, if, and we have got a hardtail chopper at the back as well we're looking at, and another bike on the way Wednesday. So yeah, we've got a few different things going on. We, we will be putting more out frequently now. Um, it's just trying to get on with it, and we've got to try and make an effort of getting these videos out, and the builds are starting to happen now few things have changed and finances have got a different a few vehicles will be going and we can start on the projects then so the t25 and the julie really uh, are the two big ones we're getting on um try and get them running before the summer and the shows but yeah thanks for watching uh, i'll put the link to the first video of this on loading uh, there'll be clips of it in this anyway let us know what you think of the boss and we will get back to you really soon with uh, some pretty cool changes coming nice one see you later